Okay, everybody, welcome back to Malden. This is the end of our project, our two family project here on James Street. And this is also the most exciting part because look, it's a finished house. This is fully staged, it's completely done. And we're so excited because this is the, the, the most rewarding part. We actually get to see the finished result. So check it out, we've got our brand new kitchen and this is one of the central features of, of this whole project. We really wanted to open up this space. You may remember the beginning of the project, there was a wall right here and there was another wall um, right here at the end of the kitchen and then there was no real like, like usable space here, it was completely like little boxes everywhere, you know, like a little section of a kitchen here, a little section of a kitchen over here. Uh, and so what we did is we took down a wall there, we took down a wall over here, and now I've got a straight line of sight directly into the living room. And that's a big, big improvement for this floor plan. It's a, it's a great value add play if you're looking to, you know, enhance the existing floor plan without spending a ton of money. Now there was some engineering involved and some extra framing because you do have load bearing walls and, and you know, you got to support the weight of the building, the roof and the floors above it. But we've been through this enough times that we kind of knew what we were getting into. There was a few surprises along the way. There always are, but we, we were able to work our way through that. And I think the result is definitely worth all those extra efforts that we took. got our countertops here. Now this is not granite. We went, um, it's the same price as granite. This is actually a quartz, but it's not as expensive as that, you know, shiny white quartz, which is, you know, a much more popular item right now, but it's also a lot more, probably double the cost of this quartz. So we, we used this again, it was like a good value add play because you get your quartz, but you don't pay the premium price of the shiny white quartz. Uh, and I think it looks great. These appliances, they're stainless steel, but they're not high end, top of the line, chef's kitchen. You don't need to do that. Okay. We don't need to spend, you know, top dollar on the highest quality appliances for a project like this. Uh, I, I think they look great and they, and they, you know, make the kitchen complete. Just like the um, appliances, the cabinets are also stock cabinets. They're not custom made in a shop um, for anybody. These are always just in stock and ready to go. They've got a nice shaker profile to them. Um, they're plywood boxes, but the hardware is, is top quality and you get a good product, but you don't have to spend an arm and a leg um, once you know where to find where these things are available. Um, we've been working with the same kitchen guy for several projects now, and I'm always very pleased with the results. Uh, everything in here looks great. And this backsplash here, it's again, a nice feature that makes the kitchen stand out more, but we use white subway, subway tile. It's a classic, classic um, design feature, but it doesn't cost a lot of money. I think our tile guy put this in two hours and the tiles themselves cost maybe a hundred bucks. I also want to comment on the staging because anytime you're doing a fix and flip project, it's really important that you show your customer, you know, the end user, your, your, your buyers, that the space can be used in, in a specific way. You know, people's imaginations are really, really bland when it comes to, oh, how do I use this space? Um, but we have an excellent staging crew now and they really bring this room to life. They bring the whole house to life. And it, to me, the most rewarding part, I think of working on a project is coming in after the stagers have, have left and done their thing. Um, because again, it, it just brings this like human element to the project. And I think that's so rewarding and people, when they walk in tomorrow morning during the open house, they're going to be able to say, oh, my couch is going to look perfect in there and my table can look, you know, perfect there. And it just really brings everything together and it makes a lot of sense and people enjoy that. Um, we've got recessed lights throughout every single floor. Um, 
our electrician was fantastic and he did the layout himself. We kind of worked with him a little bit on the location of some of these lights, but he just knew what to do and he ran with it. Uh, it, was, it was a great, great experience working with this electrician. You may have heard that it's really kitchens and bathrooms that sell homes. Uh, we talked about the kitchen. Now look at this bathroom. Just turn off the fans here. Look at this bathroom. These tiles were hand selected by Annie, our, our designer. Again, she does a fantastic job with all of the finishes. We've got a nice um, vanity here. This is a Home Depot vanity, but it's, it's like their higher end offering. Uh, so you, again, you don't have to spend a ton of money to have that nice fancy look. But you, you, if you know where to look and you have the right designer, she'll find exactly what will fit in the space. A nice smart mirror, all the light fixtures were selected by Annie. And again, more white Segway tile. You don't need to spend an arm and a leg on high-end tile to make your bathrooms and kitchens look great. It's just not necessary. But you can have little focal points like this floor, this tile floor is, in my opinion, a really cool looking floor. And you know, again, it's not top of the line in terms of like hand painted tiles, but it just looks cool. It looks really, really cool. And here's our master suite. The best feature of this room is the window, okay? You can't go wrong with daylight, in my opinion. The more daylight, the better. Um, and, and you don't have to spend a whole lot of extra money. In this case, this is a load-bearing column right here, and that's a load-bearing column right there. So our header only spans from there to there. And, you know, it's just a regular LVL. I think it's a 10-inch, maybe a 12-inch double and you know it doesn't cost a fortune it's not like we're spanning the whole width of the building you don't have to um, do anything crazy like that to get a lot of daylight in but the result is just fantastic i mean it's a huge window someone's going to wake up every morning and look out there and and just have a great start to their day in my opinion i think it's a really cool feature to have uh, and again this is our master bathroom um, we did a, a his and hers vanity so it's a double sink which is a really nice feature to have because people like to have some space in the bathroom and this vanity fits perfect. We, we sized it so that this shower wall and this vanity, you did still have some space to open drawers and you know brush your teeth and have someone walk behind you. Uh, the toilet's back here. And then again, look at what Annie did with the tile. So this was maybe one of the splurges that we decided to go for because this tile is a little bit higher end. You know, it's a little bit fancier. It has like that marble um, feel to it, but the, the floor is just hexagon white Home Depot tile. So that probably costs, you know, a couple dollars a square foot. It's not like a 10 or a $15 a square foot tile. Um, and the fixtures, you know, none of these are solid metal, um, high end faucets and, and fixtures, but they, perform extremely well and they look great. And that's the most important thing when you're doing a fix and flip like this. This is the extra bedroom. One nice thing about this is that you've got your own office space in it as well. Um, we kind of set aside this little nook. We, we have a nice big closet here, but then we set aside like a, an extra space. We kind of stole it from the old stairwell and you could put a desk there and you know, now that we're kind of through the, we're in the post COVID world, people still love to work from home. And I think that this will enable someone to do that in this space. One thing that I do actually want to point out is this stairwell. This was a big challenge for us. It's very, very narrow, okay? We had our appliances delivered a few weeks ago and the guys took one look at this um, and they said, it's not gonna work. We're not gonna get that refrigerator up here. I convinced them to try just so they could prove to me that they were right and they were right. So what that means now is that we have to hire a kind of a, a more professional moving company and they come on with a, they come on with like one of those scissor lifts. It's like a, you know, a platform that, that extends up um, 15 feet in the ground. And they're actually going to take the sashes off the window upstairs and push the refrigerator through the window to get it to the kitchen. So that's one of those challenges that you can't really predict at the beginning. 
um, but it just it just comes up all the time. And again, we've talked about this new dormer over the stairwell a couple different times. This is where your head used to hit coming up to the third floor. Every time you'd, you'd uh, come up fast, you'd get a small concussion, but now there's tons of room. And this whole floor is the owner's suite. So they've got all of this space just to themselves. Nice big um, bedroom here, vaulted ceilings. So high ceilings, but um, also have a, access to their own private deck. Check this out. This is awesome. A rooftop deck in the city. You can't beat that. So this is where you come out with your coffee in the morning or, you know, a glass of wine at the end of the day. You can set up a little table here and, um, you know, you've got the whole skyline. You can see, um, you can see far and you, you just got like your own little private nook. This is one of those features that uh, is a great addition. So if you, if you ever have an opportunity to do a rooftop deck, I highly recommend it. Um, buyers love it. They don't have to cost a ton of money. Um, there are some details that are important in terms of weatherproofing. You know, you're, if you're doing a flat roof, you have to get all your details prop, you know, correct so that you're not um, allowing moisture to penetrate into the house. But it's just one of those things that people love. So I'm very glad that we did that. And here, so, so when you finish a third floor like this, it's basically an attic converted into living space. So what that means is you have to be smart about where your mechanical systems are gonna go. Our basement is three full levels down there and to pipe up your HVAC system, you know, your duct work is a long way to go. So in a situation like this, it makes sense to put your furnace up in the attic. And I'm not going to open this because it's, it's screwed closed, but our furnace is right behind this wall right here. And, and so anytime you call for heat or call for air conditioning in the summer, your machine back here is going to turn on and it's going to pipe all of your hot or cold air throughout the third and the second floor. So that's just one of those things that we incorporated into the, the design at an early stage. And um, quite frankly, it's really the only way. It's the best way, but it might sometimes be the only way to make a project like this work. And then, um, so that's one of the walk-in closets. They do have his and her walk-in closets. Uh, this is the other one right here. You still gotta put some shelves together, but you get the idea how much space is in there. And then last but not least in this owner's suite, is the owner's master bathroom. And we still have a little bit of touch up to do here with the paint, so it's not, you know, 100% done, but you get the idea. Look how big this is. Again, tons of natural daylight, um, a nice big space, a six foot vanity, which is enormous. And again, that's nothing, it, vanities are expensive, don't get me wrong, but this is a Home Depot vanity. It's one of their higher end offerings, and I think it just looks great. And the shower, um, man, we, sh we sh definitely should have put two shower heads in here. There's enough space for at least two shower heads. Um, it's, it's just enormous, and that's great. You can never have too big of a shower, in my opinion. Lots of windows and big showers. Those are two of the features that I think are very appealing. They look great. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at right now. This project is almost wrapped up. Our open house is tomorrow morning. We've got people finishing up the painting. We've got the electricians connecting the air conditioning right now. The plumbers in the basement putting the hot water heaters together and the cleaners are coming in this afternoon. So this is sort of one of those last minute pushes, but that's just the way these projects work. You got to do what you got to do to get this thing done. And we're there just a few more hours and we've crossed that finish line. So I'm very pleased with the way this came out.